Chapter 9 Delilah I could only stare, frozen, as the screen showed me the garage. My garage. Brennan's legs sticking out from under the Camaro. The side of him was so wrong, so airy. Then, it got worse. The back door opened, and I saw myself walking in. My hands cuffed around my elbows, my shoulders rounded, my head low, trying to make myself as small as possible. Bow burned through my esophagus. That's... Stop the video! I croaked. Logan didn't answer. Logan, stop the video! I watched as I walked around the car and bent over to squeak at Brennan in my impotent, small person voice. Oh God, in less than a minute, I will watch as I stalked back toward the house and stopped, pondering, calculating, and then... Stop the video! My voice came out in an animalistic scream. I swiped at the phone, but looking jerked at it out of my reach. Then, to my surprise, he tapped the delete button and said, I'm deleting this copy. I can't risk anyone coming across this on my phone, but I'm keeping a master copy somewhere safe. Even as we stared at each other, chest heaving hard, part of me wondered if my mind have heard me scream, or maybe my neighbors. I couldn't let any of them find us. Not like this. We had to talk about it. I had so many questions, but where could we talk? Inside his car? A full body shudder ran through me. No way in hell was I getting back in there with him. I gestured to Logan to follow, and we briskly walked down the street. Only after we turned the corner did I stop walking. How do you... I mean, why? Coherent sentences were beyond me. I didn't even know where to begin with my questions. Logan took a deep breath and tucked at his necklace. When he finally spoke, his words came out in a rush, his eyes shining with fervor. I did this for your sake, Delilah. That time I talked to you, when you were on your way to the supermarket to get ice, I got the impression he was doing something bad to you, and I wanted to protect you. Obviously, if you were being abused, you couldn't report it because he was a cop. So I thought, what if I catch it all on video? They wouldn't be able to ignore it then. They'd have to take him away. I went to your house whenever I could and recorded a couple of instances of him beating you and your mom. I thought I could gather as much footage as I could over multiple occasions so he couldn't claim that it was a one-time thing or whatever. I was recording him working on his car that day and... My head was a whirl of images. I thought of Logan skulking around the house, my house, with his camera phone brandished in front of him, trying to capture the worst moments of my life to save me? And I wanted to scratch him feel his flesh peeling under my nails. Why are you showing this to me? Delilah, when I said I love you, I really meant it. This isn't some shallow teenage crush. I love you, and that means I love everything about you, even this part of you. I gaped at him. Everything was going too fast and too slow, and I didn't, couldn't understand anything. I don't understand. We're meant to be together, he said, with so much passion and belief like a pastor making an announcement to his congregation. You don't even know me. But even as I said it, I knew what he was going to say. How he spent the last few months observing me, and God following me, picking up information about me to add to his sick collection. I do know you, Delilah. I know you better than anyone else. This video proves it. This video proves nothing, aside from me. Even now, I couldn't say it. Brandon's death? I finished lamely. Logan's face was shining with sincerity as he leaned close to me. I know everything there is to know about you, and I still love you. Can anyone else say that? A black pit of dread had yawned open deep in my stomach, a feeling that wasn't entirely unfamiliar to me. It was the way I'd felt after the first time Brandon hit me, the cessation of standing at the lip of a crevice, knowing monsters looked in the deep and the dark, the cessation that things were about to get a whole lot worse. What do you want? Logan. I want you to know that we're meant to be together. So you're blackmailing me, I said flatly. He looked scandalized by the statement. Of course not. I'm not a monster. I wouldn't make you do anything you don't want to. Despite myself, I allowed a flicker of hope to come to life. Maybe he really didn't want anything. Maybe... I shook my head. Then why show me the video? To show you we're soulmates. I don't want the love of my life behind bars. And if it turns out I'm not the love of your life? He shook his head forcefully, looking more earnest than ever. 
There's no possible way we're not meant to be together. I was meant to protect you. Look how Detective Jackson hurt you all this time, and I was the only one who noticed it. I was the only one who thought of a solution. You have no idea how many bad guys are out there. The world is a fucked up place. You need me. If you left, I'd have to find you. And if I have to go get the cops involved, well, I'd do anything to keep you safe, Delilah. The hole opened up and swallowed me whole. It was hard to breathe. I sucked in a lung full of air, but my chest still felt like it was being crushed by an iron fist, as though if I were drowning. I knew what John felt like because Brandon had once pressed my head into the pool for knocking a glass of water over his keyboard. The expression, my skin crawled, was more than appropriate ear. I could practically feel my skin try to walk off my flesh just to get away from Logan. I tightened my hands into fists. I couldn't spiral back into my shell. Being trapped with Brandon, living under the crushing weight of his badge. I couldn't go back to living under someone else's thumb. That sounds like blackmail to me, I hissed. Logan reached for my hand, but I snatched it away. Why don't you give us a chance? What have you got to lose? Be honest with yourself. This was the best date you've been on. You gave me so many positive signals. You liked me. You were the one who kissed me. I couldn't stop my upper lip from curling with disgust. The caustic restort was already fizzing its way up through my throat when a small voice told me he had a point. Up until he showed me that damn video. I had regarded this as the best date I had ever been on. Not that I've been on many, but there was a connection here. Something special that made conversation between us flow effortlessly. Yeah, that's because he's a stalker who dug up everything he could about you. Before I could say a word, Logan spoke up. I know right now it feels like you're being pushed into doing something you don't want to do. But over time, I promise you'll realize you need me as much as I need you. And I swear we can progress at whatever pace you're comfortable with. Okay, I said. I'm comfortable with us going backward to a time when we didn't know each other. <laughs> Logan laughed. I knew you were going to say that. I opened and closed my mouth feeling ridiculously outmatched. He knew everything about me, and I knew nothing about him. Nothing that could help me in this situation. Sleep on it, he said. I know you won't ever find a boyfriend as dedicated as me. I walked away in a daze, everything around me muted and slow, as though I was underwater. Halfway to the house, I turned my head. Logan waved at me from inside the car. Handsome face pulled into a smile, fit for magazine covers. If he hadn't shown me the video, if I hadn't found out about how he stalked me, the sight of his face would have given me flight to butterflies in my stomach. Now, it only made me sick. My skin throbbed with revulsion, and the word in my mind spat out. Stalked. Sat painfully in my gut like a piece of flint, all hard, jagged edges that pierced inside my insides. Stalked. I had a stalker. I'd gone out on a date with him. A pretty awesome date, if I were to be completely honest. I wanted to laugh at the ridiculousness of it all. I tore my gaze from Logan and lurched away. Mom was in the living room watching TV when I came in. She jumped up and breathed a sigh of relief when she saw me. I guess I wasn't the only one who wasn't quite used to Brandon being dead. How was the date? She asked, turning off the TV. She twisted around and rested her arms on the back of the couch, smiling expectantly at me. It was great. Up until he showed me a video of me killing your boyfriend. It was okay. Mom groaned. <sighs> Don't go all surely teenager on me. Come on, I need the details. Tell me over hot chocolate. Despite myself, a small part of me wanted to stay down here with mom. Sipping hot chocolate so thick that it had the consistency of melted ice cream. I wanted to spill. To stop out every single lower detail. Down to the puddle of blood reaching toward my feet from under Brandon's car. I wanted mom to hug me and tell me it was all okay, that she didn't hold Brandon's murder against me, that I had saved us, saved her, and she was so grateful, and everything would be okay. But another part of me was furious at mom. It was a part that screamed, you didn't protect us. You let Brandon into our lives. You let him strip you of your power, your strength, and reduce you into a blubbering mess with zero confidence. I killed him for our sake, and now it's my life on the line. It took all of me to keep from lashing out at her, and I knew it wasn't fair. But I couldn't totally quiet that part of me. I managed to choke out a non-confrontational, I'm too tired, maybe tomorrow, before trudging upstairs into the bathroom. 
First, a shower so hot it felt like I was stripping off my skin as I lathered up. I took my time rubbing shampoo into my scalp, soaking every inch of my body, letting the suds and water scald away the grime of the day, wishing it could be this easy to wash out everything that had to do with Logan. After my shower, I felt a little bit less like I was about to explode into a million tiny shards. My phone beeped with a message from Aisha. Hi Aisha, 9.17pm. How was it? Delilah, 9.18pm. It was okay. I'm tired. Talk to you later. I turned my phone to silent and switched on my laptop. My head humming with thoughts of Logan, of Brandon, of Mom, of the things Logan had told me in the car. Out of habit, I opened Instagram and scrolled through it listlessly, looking at the pictures of my friends blowing kisses at the camera, showing off their footwear, their food, their nails. The purposelessness of their posts jabbed at me. I wanted to put my fist through the screen. My fingers moved across the keyboard and typed Logan's name into the search box. He and I had followed each other months ago, but I hadn't paid that much attention aside from a casual glance through some of his pictures. My skin crawled when I realized he'd been looking through my pictures with sinister purposes, digging out information about me for his sick obsession. Logan knew my darker secrets. Did he also know other secrets I carried? No, I couldn't let my mind go there. Not right now. I'd completely lose my shit. I had to focus. There was nothing out of the ordinary about his pictures. Mostly Logan's with his buddies, all of them tall, broad-shouldered, healthy, all American types with good looks. Wholesome. Happy. I didn't even know where to begin trying to glean useful information out of this. Like, how the hell do I get him out of my life? I looked through his pictures until I couldn't stomach the thought of him anymore, slamming my laptop shut. I burrowed into my bed and nuzzled my face into my pillow. This bear sucked me in, wrapped his claws around me, and entrapped me in a solid, unforgiving terror. I had escaped from one maniac, only to run straight into another. What was it about me that attracted these men? These predators? Was there something wrong with me? Did I have prey printed across my forehead? Had Pa's death broken me to the point where anyone could see I was vulnerable and ripe for the picking? Sleep took a while to claim me. When it did, it was uneasy. A dark forest full of blood and dangerous secrets that snagged at my skin and sipped my blood. I might have screamed out loud a couple of times. In my dreams, I bit and scratched at something dark, only to find out the thing I was attacking was me. And then I wept with revulsion and lunged at myself again, claws outstretched. I was the biggest monster of them all. I woke up more exhausted than before I'd gone to bed. I stayed in bed for a while, watching the dust motes glitter as they floated through the streaks of sunlight streaming through my curtains, no closer to figuring out what I was going to do about my little problem. I shut my eyes. There was a hesitant knock on my door. Sweetie, you awake? Mama asked. I turned my back to the door. I couldn't face mom right now. I couldn't sit at the kitchen counter and have some bullshit girly chat with mom about how cute my day was. I needed time to think, to let it all sink in, to get my head straight and figure, Detective Mendes is here, and she brought donuts. They're still warm. I'm making coffee. Come on, sleepyhead. Mom said cheerfully, then she patted back downwards. She might as well have kicked me in the chest. Mendes, I spent last night swimming in a lake of despair. Now, all of a sudden, fear slides through the black waters. I came fully awake, my senses painfully alert, every alarm bell ringing. Mendes is here. I shot out of bed and paced about as silently as I could. Don't want them to hear my footsteps downstairs. Maybe I could pretend not to feel well, but maybe that would make Mendes even more suspicious. She was obviously suspicious, otherwise, she wouldn't be here with donuts. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Calm. I must stay calm. Or must I not? How do innocent, non-cop-killing teens behave two weeks after the death of their beloved stepdad figure? Hmm? Would they still be grieving or moving along nicely? My mind cried ferociously as I brushed my teeth. I splashed water on my face and studied my reflection. I had the good fortune of having a near-perfect complexion. There were no dark circles near puffiness under my eyes. I looked well-rested, well-adjusted. Is that a good thing? Then it hit me. Mom. Of course. All I had to do was follow mom's cue. If she was still grieving, I should probably also be grieving. And if mom was all breezy and fine, then I could probably be all la di da di da Mom had sounded unhappy and relaxed at the door, so that was how I should carry myself. Okay, I got this. Ten minutes later, 
and went down the stairs and greeted Mom and Detective Mendes with a cheerful, Morning! Mendes was seated adjacent to Mom at the dining table. She gave me a Saturday morning smile. Bright, cheery, relaxed. But her eyes gave me a quick once over. I looked back at her, my face open. I'd done well. I knew I had. I put on a pink cable knit sweater over faded jeans and tied my hair with an actual goddamn scrunchie. No one, especially not a cop, has ever been murdered by a girl who wears scrunchies with daisies printed on them. Mendes couldn't possibly find anything suspicious about me. Not like this. Your mom told me you had a big day yesterday, Mendes said as I slid into my seat. My skin shrank at the mention of Logan, becoming too tight for my body. One fucking emergency at a time, I wanted to scream. Yeah, it was okay, I managed to say. I was so focused on dealing with Mendes' questions about Brandon that I completely forgot to consider what to say if she asked me about Logan. Why is she even asking me about Logan? She's been so secretive about it, Mom said. She and Mendes exchanged a look that said, Teens, am I right? Mendes gave a laugh that was probably designed to sound light and breezy and very one of us girls. Where did he take you? She popped the donut hole in her mouth, her eyes never leaving mine, studying me, assessing, prickling across my skin like spider legs. I needed caffeine to sharpen my sleep dulled mind, so I took a gauge of coffee before answering. It burned my tongue, and I coughed, almost snored to get up my nose. Oh God, I was so bad at the whole appearing innocent thing. Um, we went to this like obstacle course thingy in the middle of the woods. Oh, a monkey see, monkey do, Mendes said. I love that place. Good choice. I like this kid already. It took every drop of will not to give her a look. Not to give any indication of anything bad happening with Logan. New strategy. My date was uneventful. Boring. And I probably won't be seeing more of Logan. Yeah, it was okay. I said. I tried to punctuate it with a hair flip. Then belatedly realized I tied my hair back with the goddamn scrunchie. Luckily, Meta didn't even seem to notice that awkward hair flip. Your mom tells me you're thinking of applying to the National University of Singapore. She said. I glanced at mom, who been proudly at me. It's one of the hardest colleges to get into in the whole world, Mom said. Mendes nodded. Very impressive choice. Well, I haven't gotten in. I mumbled. You will, Mom said loyally. She turned to Mendes. She has a 4.0 GPA, and you should read her college application essay. It made me tear up. I'm sure it's excellent. Mendes smiled at Mom, then turned her attention to me. How are you holding up, D? Here it comes. I glanced at mom, took in how she was carrying herself, bravely cheerful. Right. Well, it hasn't been easy, Mendes nodded encouragingly. But I think mom and I are doing the best we can. Should that have come out as a question? I tried again. We're getting by. I wondered belatedly if getting by sounded too much like getting over it. I was a robot trying to pass as human. Before long, Mendes, someone who was actually paid for detecting bullshit, would sniff out my lies in. Good, good, Mendes said. I'm sorry if I'm prying. I wanted to make sure you're both doing okay. I've been trying to move things along with Brandon's life insurance, but you know how insurance companies are. I almost snorted out loud at the mention of Brandon's life insurance. It was one of the many gestures he made early on in the relationship to prove what a good guy he was. To prove how much he cared. Look, babe, he said presenting the insurance papers with a flourish, and Mom had fallen for it. So had I, actually. As far as gestures went, it had been a damn convincing one. Mom gave a bitter laugh. <laughs> I know how they are, all right. It took ages after Dee's father passed for his insurance company to pay out. I really hope Brandon's insurance company pays out before college. I've heard international students' fees are no joke, Mena said. Yup, they're brutal, Mom said. She glanced at me and smiled proudly. But Deer has been working really hard at her part-time job. They pay so well, much more than you'd expect from part-time work at a school. Mendes eyebrows rose. Is that so? My stomach curdled. The last thing I wanted to talk about right now was my part-time job. I tried a small laugh, which came out wooden. <laughs> Mom's exaggerating. What is it exactly that you do, Dee? Mendes asked. Just boring go library stuff. I said quickly. Too quickly? Shit, change the subject, quick. I don't know about boring. You're helping to save up for college, Mom said. She turned to Mendes. That's why it means so much to you that you're following up on Brandon's life assurance. It'll help us out a lot, Detective. 
Please, call me Val. She hesitated for a second. I just wanted to, um, this might be inappropriate, but um, I know Brandon might not have been the easiest person to get along with sometimes. And I always wondered if he, you know. Brandon was, mom staring into her coffee. Her voice came from afar. I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but, mom said. But her chin trembled a little. Then she looked straight into Mendes' eyes, and an understanding passed between them. Mendes nodded, her face registering, no surprise. Only in, I knew it, expression. My stomach plunged. Mom had pretty much given Mendes the information she'd been hankering for. That we were being abused by Brandon. That we had a motive for killing him. Mom didn't care if we had a motive for killing Brandon. She thought this death was an accident. She couldn't notice the new way Mendes was looking at us. I could almost hear her thoughts wearing away. The mental calculation spinning as we sat there sipping our coffees and nibbling at donuts. They both have motives. Which one did it? The mother or the daughter? The mother or the... Menace's gaze flicked from mom to me, quick as a striking snake. Too fast. I was caught with my mask off. Something flickered in my eyes, and I felt the firm hand of the law closing around me, squeezing, crushing. I saw the answer in her eyes, searing bright. The daughter. The rest of Saturday passed by in a haze. After Mendes left, I wandered around the house with my headphones on. They weren't plugged in or anything. They were there so I wouldn't have to talk to mom. More text from Aisha. Hello? Details about the date, please. I began to type out. It was... Go- nope. I couldn't make myself do it. My stomach clenched. My teeth clashed. The thought of telling Aisha, of all people, that my date with Logan went well. I turned off my phone instead. I went back to trying to figure out how to get out of this shit storm my life had become. I knew I was hopelessly outmatched by both Logan and Mendez. Both were strategists, meticulous, able to see the big picture, patient enough to stick to the step-by-step aspects of their plans, and here I was, stuck between them. <sighs> the same nightmares plucked at me that night, and in the morning, I awoke with a start when Mom knocked on my door. You're going to be late for school, she said. I'm up, I called out. Then I remained in bed and stared at the ceiling for a while. A delicious smell wafted through the door, tickling my nostrils. Something bready along with eggs and sausages and coffee. Despite myself, my mouth watered. What did I have for dinner? Mom had gone out with her friends and I had a big plate of nothing. Maybe I'd feel better after a good meal. I got dressed and bowed down the stairs. I'll have a big plate of whatever you're making, Mom, I said, halfway down. Morning, someone said. Someone who was distinctively not mom. Logan. My legs forgot how to move. I stood there, staring at him. My stalker. My blackmailer. As he stood in the middle of the kitchen, holding a frying pan loaded with what looked like diced mushrooms and onions. What the hell was up with people thinking they could drop by my house for breakfast? Take a seat, he said. Morning, sweetheart, mom said, her head popping from behind the fridge door. She took out a carton of tomato juice. Logan brought bagels and offered to cook us breakfast. Why didn't you tell me the two of you are partners in chemistry lab? She placed a glass in front of me and poured some juice into it. Mom! My voice was strangled. Small. It was drawn out by the other sounds. Mom chattering as she poured juice for all of us, the pan sizzling as Logan cracked the eggs into it. Dimly, I felt myself sinking into a chair. My legs had given out beneath me. Mom! I tried again, louder this time, and Logan turned his head. It snapped his gaze on mine. I choked on my next words. He was still smiling, his easy smile, but his eyes were still, a warning etched into the hard lines of his mouth. Yes, sweetie? Mom was too busy poking aside a paper bag. She missed the look of horror that passed across my face. Which bagel do you want? Sesame? Poppy seed? Plain? I took my eyes from Logan's, my heart racing. I couldn't do it. He'd tell her everything. He showed her the video. Show her how I walked past Brandon's Camaro and then turned around and put my foot out and tripped the jack. I forced a smile. I'll have a sesame one. Thanks. Mom winked at me when she passed me my bagel. Lowering her voice, she leaned close and said, I like him, sweetie. I think he's a keeper. Mom always did have the worst taste in guys. End of chapter 9. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.